I'm sitting with Sister Marina Ivankovic. When the operation started back in 1981, Sister Marina was working as a typist at the municipality of Chitluk. So I would like her to share with us why she became the nun and how she decided to do so. Ovako, to je bila 1981. godina. It was 1981 year when Our Lady appeared. I worked as a clerk in a municipality. One day, I met my cousin, who had become a nun, Sister Lilia Pechar, and later I met her sister, who told me that Lilia had a wonderful time in a convent of all grade. But nothing she said was attractive to me, nothing special, because I had never thought of becoming none. And then one day, sitting in my office, I felt an urge to go somewhere. Something was calling me. I had to go somewhere to the convent, and the sadness grabbed my heart. What convent, I thought to myself. Since at the time visionaries were hiding from the police, they couldn't come to the street openly or anywhere else. Apparitions were not public, they were hiding in the houses. I decided to ask Vizka when I get home or one of the visionaries. I would ask, it was Vizka I thought of first. What was I supposed to do? I arrived close to our village and left the bus. And I was walking for a while when I saw Vitska crossing the street. I was not e it was not easy to meet any of them at the time. And I said, Vitska, please stop. I have something to tell you. And she asked me, what was that? I told her that something was happening to me. And if she could ask our lady that evening during the apparition, what was happening to me? She told me, come tonight. Yakov and Vitska were present at the apparition that evening. I was very excited. Now she will, they will ask, well, what about me, what to do next? And the apparition started. And it lasted maybe two, three minutes. And then both of them stood up. Vitska said, Yakov, say what Our Lady said to her. And he said that Our Lady told me, follow my path and be, with the time you will become happy. And they said that she had kissed me on the forehead. I did not feel that kiss then. I didn't feel it physically. But in my heart, I felt that call that I have now vocation to become nun. That was that kiss, probably kiss into my heart. So I entered convent in Bielopolje, actually year after, in 1982, because my brother was arrested, my brother Ivan, because he had seen cross spinning and he was two months in prison. I didn't enter, but I did enter the seminars in Bielopolje. And then you spent some time in the parish of Međugorje. I spent two years here in Međugorje. In 2001, Sister Marina was able to see the Blessed Mother, and I would really like her to share that experience with us. I spent 10 years in America. I served at the, in the parish of Cyril and Methodius on Manhattan. I came back home for a vacation that year. It was the eve of the apparitions of Our Lady. That is the 20th anniversary of the apparitions. And I came to greet the sisters in a sacristy in the evening. One of, them, one of the sisters told me, Marina, something's happening in the church. Oh my God. There was always something. The first words I would hear in Medjugorje, somebody saw something, oh God help us. This was my reaction. But while I was standing there and talking to the sisters, I also heard some noise in a church, so I opened the sacristy door and looked in. By Our Lady's statue, there was a 10 or 15 people by the statue. They were raising their hands to Our Lady. They were shouting. Those were strange, strange shouts, but joyful shouts, shouts of excitement, probably of excitement, and then it stopped. It lasted oh, maybe a minute or so. 
I came back to the sacristy and said, people really see something. They see something by Our Lady statue. The other people did nothing. They were sitting and looking at those who were shouting, and they were looking at them, only that. And then something was calling me to the church to see what was going on, what was happening. So this was happening before the evening mass, maybe 10 minutes to 7 in the evening. I, I came down the steps in front of the altar, looking more toward the statue of St. James and Tabernacle, and I saw Father Radosh, our priest, who was calming these people down when they... He was calming them. When he saw me coming in, he left to the sacristy, and I stayed there. All of a sudden, in one moment, something simply made me or encouraged me to look up to the statue of Our Lady. In one instant, I saw a most beautiful image of a young woman, 17 or 18 years old, tiny face with em emphasized red cheek, cheeks. She had the hands like this, just the way they paint her now. And she was up high and she was looking down on us like this. I saw that she moved her eyes, sort of slowly. One could see it was some spirit, something supernatural. She wasn't talking, only smiling, only smiling. It was like that, of course. My left arm was numb, and I was holding my arm and entered the sacristy, telling them, I saw her, I saw her. Of course, sisters were happy. Uh, and the later, the parish priest told me, that was for you, that is your personal grace. So it is, 20 years after I received my vocation, to 1981 and 2001, 20 years, and that is a personal gift. I believe so, personal gift. If somebody asks me, I will tell, but I won't go around saying I saw Our Lady. Do you have anything to tell to our pilgrims? Imate li šta reći našim poljočasnicima? Come as soon as possible, come as soon as possible. I do hope that Our Lady will do the miracle and this will be over soon and we're joyfully waiting for them. I met Marinko Ivankovic a long, long time ago, almost 40 years ago. If you come to Medjugorje and you decide to climb to the apparition hill on your own, you are going to meet Marinko who climbs the hill on a daily basis. This was my desire to do, but Marinko is just recovering from uh, COVID-19 disease, so we were not able to climb to the apparition hill together. Whatever book you read about Medjugorje, his name is mentioned, and I will would like you all to meet this man who was only 41 years old when the operation started. So I went to work in my vineyard and came maybe 20 to 7 down to the spot on the road, the one where they waited for Our Lady first evening. There were a lot of people on the road. I would say up to 100 people, children, adults, a lot. So I asked them what happened, and they said that the children had seen Our Lady and left to the hill. We stood there, I think some 10 minutes, when Mirjana and Ivanka started coming down from the hill, Mirjana holding Ivanka's hand. Ivanka's grandma was standing close to me. Ivanka came and wrapped her arms around her neck and screamed, and she was crying. I asked her, why are you crying? I asked Our Lady tonight about my mother, you see. Her mother had died 40 days ago, and Our Lady said, Ivanka, your mother is with me in heaven. Go and be obedient to your grandma. So I told her, Ivanka, why are you crying? There's no greater joy. Now you know she is in heaven. Let us sing, let us rejoice. But no response from her. She was still clinging to her grandma and crying. Now I felt in courage, who is greater but Jesus and Queen of Peace. Off I went my, with my car to parish office in order to tell Father Yosa what was happening in my neighborhood. So there I was in front of old parish house and I saw two nuns standing on the stairs. 
We knew each other, so we exchanged greetings, and I asked if Father Yosef was home. They answered that he was not, that he had gone to Zagreb a few days ago. But Father Zrinko was there, and he came out at that moment. He asked me, How are you? How are things? And I told him that six little children had seen Our Lady night before, and also that same evening, and that Ivanka, whose mother died 40 days ago, was crying. Maybe it would be be good to, to, if he could speak with her. He raised his arms like this, saying, Marinko, who was given by God a grace to see Our Lady, it is a gift for that person. There's nothing for, that, for us in that. So I returned to the village, and I went to Vitska's house. Maria and Yakov were there. Both of them jumped, saying, We saw Our Lady tonight. Maria was telling me how Vitska had come to, te- to her and said Our Lady had come. Yakov was there, too. And Maria continued, when we came up close to Ivan, Mirjana, and Ivanka, we knelt. I first saw Our Lady's head, Maria added. And I don't know how long after I saw a whole figure and she was talking with other visionaries. And I didn't understand that a thing. Yakov said, Marinko, when I knelt down, I saw Our Lady immediately talking to those four visionaries, but I didn't understand anything. This is interesting. Two of them did see Our Lady, but they but didn't understand anything. The next day is interesting. It was Friday, 26th of June. I came home from work, had some lunch, and around 5 o'clock I, I went to Vitska's house and found five of the visionaries. Ivan Dragicevich wasn't there. I asked them if you would go that evening. They said, they would they said they would go up i told them if our lady comes tonight make sure to ask her why did she come here and what is she a- wants from us when we set off from vitska's house her mother poured holy water into a jar and gave it to us saying take this and bless it just in case you don't know whether our lady is that or satan it was heavily raining previous evening and thundering so lightning had struck the phone central in the post office, so the phones were dead. We were walking on the road to the place where they, from where they had seen Our Lady first and second night. Parishioners were there, maybe a couple of hundred of them. And when we came there, Ivan Dragicevich came too. At one point, visionary said, look, there's light, look at the light, look at the light, Our Lady's on the hill. Half the slope of the hill where there were few peoples, people were standing, so I asked them, did Our Lady come close where those people stand? Vitska took my hand and saying, Marinko, take a look, there she is. I can't say where you see Our Lady. And then Ivan, who played soccer every day, went first ahead of us. And I took Mirjana by hand, here and there, there were only bushes and rocks, no path. I helped her and also I took holy water from Vitska. When we came close to Ivan, they all made sign of the cross and they were praying. Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory be. Then in one moment, they all knelt down. I asked, did Our Lady come? Yes. They knelt between two rocks, tall like this table. And I asked them, where did Our Lady come? Which rock she stands on? Or is she on the grass? No, they replied. Our Lady stands on the bright cloud and she didn't touch the ground. So I kept on asking, did you ask her why she come here? No, we didn't. Well, ask her. So they did, and they said, Our Lady said that she had come to this parish because there are many believers in this parish whose faith is strong and who pray a lot. I came to you so that you can convert and reconcile people. After that, I handed Vitska holy water, and she was dipping her fingers in the jar, sprinkling water forward, saying, If you are Our Lady, Stay with us. If you are not, go away. Then I asked them if Our Lady was still there. Yes, they said, she's smiling and she's looking upon all of you and she's smiling. And that was for that evening. 
Now Sunday, usually the adults would go to 11 o'clock mass, while grandmas who would make lunch and take care of the children would go to early mass. That was the custom. However, I decided with my neighbor, Mate Pavlovich, may God rest his soul, he passed away, we decided to go early Mass, and after that we would go up to the hill where visionaries had apparition, and we would put some poles and ropes so we would preserve free space when they would come in the afternoon so that they could, would have more room. You see, more and more people had been coming every day. We went up there, took poles and placed them and ropes too. Some elder people from the village, late Mate too, went up there to keep a guard so that nobody would enter. And I went to Vitska's house. There were five of them and they were, they were set off the, to the hill. Ivan also joined us. There were maybe a couple thousand people and others told me so. One couldn't make it through to the place where visionaries had apparition. I roared, make a passage, visionaries are coming through. They have to come inside. People parted a little bit and we came inside. And as usual, visionaries stood next to each other and I was to their right. They made sign of the cross, prayed and they knelt down. There was one family with a little child inside, in that free space. Somebody asked if Our Lady had come. Yes, they were talking to Our Lady. And the father of that little boy said, ask if my son, so he said, Daniel will be healed. He said only Daniel. Yes. Yes, he will be. You have to believe firmly. You have to fast and pray. Your son will be healed. Visionary said that. When we came down from the hill, I asked him, and he told me that they were somewhere from the area and that the boy is Daniel Shetka. I asked what was wrong with the boy. He said neither he walks nor he talks. The boy was, the boy was three or four years old. Sometime later, maybe in October, there was a man who stopped by my house and asked me if he could get water. I had, of course, water he could get. I had water all the time for every, anyone who came from the hill. And he asked me, do you remember me? I said, first time, first time I see you, I don't remember you. How come you don't remember me? It was Sunday and I, I was with the, my little boy inside that free space and I asked the visionaries if my son will be healed. So I said, what happened with him? How is he now? Look at him, the way he jumps and plays around. What was then? He couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, he said. He's completely normal child now, completely healed. That, that was the first miracle that we experienced. Tuesday, I came early from work. While driving through Chitluk, I spotted a police car driving behind me. I came in front of the house and there was this man, I don't want to mention his name because I maintain their cars. He told me, you have to come to the police station. Are you coming with me or are you coming with your own car? I told him, you can go, I will follow in my car. I went to the house and told my father to tell Dragica only she was, once she was home that I had to go to police in Chitluk. So I came there and I spoke to that man. He wanted to know everything about the visionaries, about each of them, how many brothers and sisters they had, how old they were, where their fathers worked, everything. He spoke to me two or three hours. He left and the other man came and wanted to tell him all of that again. He left. The third man came. It was already evening, 10 o'clock at night. I came to the station around 1 o'clock and then I heard big noise in the building, room next to mine. Somebody was making a noise. I didn't know what was going on. Since I I'd taken a seat around one o'clock, nobody offered me anything, not even a glass of water, nothing. They only wanted me to talk to them. After a few minutes, let's say five, ten minutes, silence. The three men who had spoken with me came and one more. And this one was swearing and telling me, 
And he's telling me, Our Lady doesn't exist, God doesn't exist. But I said that I believe that they exist, that Our Lady had appeared. He punched me here twice with the fist. And since I was sitting, I didn't fall. If I had been standing, I would be, have fallen down. I felt dizzy. After that, I bowed my head and I didn't want to look at them or talk to them anymore. Nothing. They realized that I didn't want to talk anymore. The one who punched me told them, give him pen and paper, let him write everything he said today. They left and another policeman came, waving like this toward me. I didn't know what was going on. And around one o'clock, after midnight, the woman came, the one who wrote on the machine, typist. They took my statement and the chief of police said, read this. I did and there was a word there, superstition. So I told him, I don't know the meaning of this word. I didn't say this. He said to the typist, cross this out. Are you going to sign it now? I will. Go home and stay home. We will need you more. So I was leaving from the police building and my wife and my neighbor Mate were waiting. We got into the car and I asked my wife, when did you come here? She said, when I came home, your father told me that you were going to the police station, so I came here. But they wouldn't let me in. I've been waiting for you here. And I asked, what happened around 10 o'clock? There was a big noise, do you know? Yes, I know. She said, the visionaries came. Marinko, I want to ask you only this. When you were in the police station, were you afraid? When the man punched me. This is what I said. Jesus, thank you for sending us your mother. They can kill me now or do with me whatever. I will say no lie. I will tell them only the truth. I was not afraid of anything. The local people of Međugorje are very, very private. And usually they say that the experiences they had, especially in those first days of the apparitions of Međugorje, they say that those were gifts given just for them. A friend of mine, Draga Vidović, witnessed many events of Međugorje. But I asked Draga because she was here on that special day when Our Lady invited priests in Međugorje to hear confessions on a daily basis. Draga. Okay. Uh, so when Our Lady said be converted, in the beginning, so that was one of the first and one of the most important messages uh, for the world. Just like uh, Fatima's message, main message was the most important conversion. We didn't think it was for us because we lived in the communist country where there were atheism, communist people who didn't believe in God. There were many other religions. So we thought it was for them to be converted, to change religion. But it was for us first, Catholics. So this is why I like to share one operation that happened on the 2nd of August, 1981. I was uh, 15 years old when the operations begin. So that is the age, that was the age about most of the visionaries and my best friend, was Maria Pavlovich. We lived next door. Every evening I would stay with the visionaries until the end of the evening program, uh, rosary, holy mass, and then Father Jozef, pastor, and the visionaries, they would pray individually over sick people. And after that, we would clean the church we would help the nuns to clean the church because at that time they didn't have workers. So we came home about 10 o'clock, Maria, Visioner and me, and we said good night to each other. But after a few minutes, Maria is calling me. She said, Draga, when I came into my room, Our Lady, she appeared to me and she said, 
come into the field at 11 o'clock and say to the people to come that we can touch Blessed Mother. Of course, it was short time. I don't remember if the phones were working at that time because there was a period when the phones were broken, the lines. But even if they were working, uh, everything was controlled by the communists, by the government, by police. So we just spread the word to people, maybe we were about 50. And of course, we couldn't go into the whole village because the police car was passing every 30 minutes. So we came to this spot. Uh, what is very interesting, uh, at that time, as I said, it was 2nd of August. Our Lady, she, in July, she would appear from time to time on the hill. We would go together with the visionaries. But she said to come here. We were wondering why she didn't say come to the hill. Why into the fields? So we were just uh, passed by some fields where the grapes were planted, tobacco, that was mostly of tobacco. And we came to this spot. Uh, we had three fields like this, in this area. This was the place where the wheat would be threshed, like threshing yeah, the thresh of the, 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 thresh wheat. Of the wheat. This is very symbolic, you know. And I don't think so, it is coincidence. So I remember the visionaries before the apparition begin, there were four of them. Vitska, she was not here, and Ivanka. I don't know the reason why. I think Vitska, she broke the leg, and Ivanka, she went to Mostar. So Maria was here, Mirjana was here, Yaakov and Ivan. This is what I remember. So before the apparition begin, they told us how Blessed Mother, she said that we would be all standing not kneeling, also the visionaries. So first time I saw the visionaries standing, but later I understood the reason. And they told us how they would approach each one of us, the arm, to one of them, so with their help, we can touch Blessed Mother. And of course, you know, we just couldn't wait the moment to touch Blessed Mother, because we were afraid that she is going to leave you know so this chance you know you have only in your life one time uh, during that moment while it was night i heard people were going to the hill coming back from the hill during that moment we heard people praying singing religious songs but at one moment i heard a man who was saying bad words and they were laughing. Of course, they didn't know we were here because we were like 50 meters from them, but we were praying in silence. The reason that the police don't hear us, don't stop us in this intention. And that was really bad to hear. After I touched Blessed Mother, I remember I gave my arm to Maria. I felt something like electricity but i don't know if this was my emotion or something supernatural i cannot say that but i felt something but after several people have touched blessed mother maria she started to cry and she said stop don't touch blessed mother anymore you made dirty her dress in that moment, what I thought, because that was field, this was farm, I was 15, as I said, I thought maybe somebody stepped with the dirty shoes on Our Lady's robe. And Maria, she started to cry so much. She said, what did you do? Blessed Mother, she left us. But not everybody was able to touch Blessed Mother. These people who did not have a chance to touch Blessed Mother, they were mad with the visionaries. You promised to us 
You stole us. Why did we come? And then Marinko, one our neighbor, uncle, he asked Maria, Maria, what happened? Why you are crying? And she said, when Our Lady came, usually when Our Lady appears, even during the night, she always appears in light. But she came with a normal dress, gray dress. But when some people touch her, I could see all black marks on her robe, on her dress. Suddenly there was a person who really, when she touched or he, it was all black. And this is why Blessed Mother, she left. Maria and the other visionaries didn't know the meaning of that. And I remember Marinko, he said, people, something is not good in all this. Tomorrow we all go for confession. So Maria and me, we went home and we were just uh, sitting on the porch of uh, gate of her house uh, on the step and uh, I asked Maria, do you remember Maria? Who those people who had more sins were? Because these were all local people. Because as I said, usually when Our Lady appears in uh, light, they could recognize these people. Maria, she said, I remember seeing their arms, but I forgot who they were. So this is why I thought that was nice. Our Lady, she came to tell us a message, but she didn't come here to embarrass us. So this was secret that went to, to heaven. So the next day, during the regular apparition, uh, Maria, together with the other visionaries in the church, she asked Blessed Mother, why did you leave? Why you didn't let all people touch? What were the black marks on your robe? And she said, dear my angels, these were sins not confessed. Go look for the priest for confession. I'm sitting with Zlata Ivankovic, Vitska's visionary mother, and I asked her to share with us about the rosary. It happened in the month of April, around the 20th, I believe, it happened. We were getting ready, children and all, to go to collect the woods for the fire, you know. Remember what it was like, small tractor, and Franjo hopped on. When he climbed on the tractor, he said, here, there are two rosary beads in the trailer. And he took them and brought them to the house and placed them in front of me and grandma and said, Our Lady sent those to mama and grandma so that they can better pray to God. Oh, we were confused, Our Lady, who? Nobody had a clue. And then two months later, Our Lady appeared. That's how it happened. And these rosary beads remained with us Priests visited us, Father Rupcic and others. They inspected them, and some Germans too. They all inspected them, but they couldn't bring any conclusion. Who, what? There are 14 stations on the cross, and I saved, the, and I saved these rosaries. My late husband told me, save these. Who knows, maybe some grandmas were collecting grass and left them behind, you see. But it bothered me, so I inquired everywhere in the village and asked everyone if these rosaries belong to someone. If someone lost them, but nobody answered. And then when Our Lady appeared, they asked her on the hill, and they said, Bitska said, that Our Lady said, that it was the gift to our family. So these rosaries have been here to this day, you see. Would you show them to us, Auntie Zlata? No problem. I will. Franjo found these two rosaries on the tractor. In the tractor. Take a look. This one was 
thrown under and they were tied together. And here there was a relic, here. There was a little screw here that kept it together. And somebody took them, people. Well, they, they were held by many hands. Anyone was able to take them. And it was lost somewhere, and now the cross is without it. They are missing here. Take a look at them, look. Here at the back are the stations of the cross, all 14 stations. Yes. And I asked Vitska, how come that there is no corpse here? Why is Jesus missing on this cross? And she answered, how can Jesus be there at all? These are stations here. He's alive. He was walking from station to station till his last breath. That's why she says he's not here. That's how she explained. That's right. That's how she explained to me. And so we still have these rosary beads. If I may ask you, Auntie Zlata, at the beginnings of the apparitions, when all those crowds of people started to come to Medjugorje, what was that like to you? How can it be at all? It didn't feel comfortable because I could never imagine something like that to happen. But it did happen. The fear was enormous because of police. They were chasing children, chasing us always interrogating, but it all passed away. We will forget everything, all in God's hands. He knows it all, he will guide and provide, and that will be the best. There we go. Thank you so much, Auntie Zlata. Thank God, thank God. with Ivan and Anja and we want to recall the first days of Medjugorje. Every book we read Daniel Shetka is mentioned. So we wanted to talk to you because you are true witnesses of that time. Your wife has already said something but I'd like you to tell us together how was it, what happened. I know that Daniel is in Germany now, he works, he lives on his own and he is well. He is your youngest. I have three children, too. I have two sons and daughter in the middle. The youngest child is always our s soft spot. In 1980, Ivan, Ivan, you worked in Germany, right? I worked right? in Germany, and I want to say that two of our children had been born in Germany. And we had married soon on the 7th, it will be... 51 years we've been married. March the 7th. February 7th. So we had so we had two children, some money saved, there's family old house down there. This one we built, not finished half of it, but it I thought it was enough. Little more money to save. I was planning to return home soon too. I left her behind here. And Daniel was born in Mostar. Daniel was supposed to be born Caesarian. All three of our children were born Caesarian. Anja, when was Daniel supposed to be born? On Sunday. He was supposed to be born on Sunday. But the doctor told you that you would do Caesarian Thursday. So they did. And the boy was well. I came to the hospital, but three days later they said they, the boy is not well, this and that. One day I came to see him in the incubator and his hand was in spasm. And the doctor came and all I understood was calcium. They gave him an injection. I don't know. 
I don't know. I hadn't come then. What year was that? 1977? Uh, 78. The 78. He was born in 1978, September 21st. 78. Since then, wherever there was a doctor, shrine places, we would go to Yaitse, to St. John's Shrine, here and there. He couldn't walk and he couldn't talk. No, no. Andrew, you were taking care of he him. He couldn't, he could say mom, dad, but he couldn't walk. And he could crawl. He was crawling like this, but he couldn't walk, nothing. So we went to St. John's Shrine and on our way home we stopped in Milkovici. We had relatives there and St. John celebrated there too. And the word was that Our Lady had appeared. Let's go there. We set off immediately, we came there. Well, nobody knew us and we couldn't find anything out. Every day we went there. Finally, I told little Yakov. Anja, to ask about Daniel. Yes, he said he would. And we gathered there like this. They had that rope circling the place. It then. wasn't the rope, but tape. There were only us inside. There were 50 or 60 people altogether. And the children, and the children visionaries said, Our Lady will come now. I was watching them, observing them. And they kept on saying, Here Our Lady comes, here she comes. While saying, Here Our Lady comes, here she is. They smiled. I saw my little boy bowed his head. He'd seen something shining. I was telling Yakov, recommend him to Our Lady. He said, Our Lady looks at him kindly. All she said, Daniel is fine. Daniel will be, and Daniel will be healed. Off she went. And then when they said that Our Lady was leaving, my little boy's eyes were looking at the same direction like visionaries. Our Lady's gone. I don't know. I was then, as I am today, true believer, always, always going to church here and in Germany, my children too. Thank God he is well. He attended school here spend time with friends. After the apparition, he was one day on the steps. He stood up and said, look, Daddy, I'm standing. After that apparition? After the apparition, he couldn't walk, he would crawl. That day he stood up and said, look at me, I can stand now. Yes, that was the sign to me. Though I believed. How did you feel, Mrs. Anja? How did you take it? Every move he made was a pure joy to us. And when he became able to sit, when he spoke first, he did speak like any baby, mommy, daddy. Sister, he couldn't speak clearly, but I understood him. But when he started the school, I took him to the doctor for the speech test. And little by little, he was getting better. And when she told him, Daniel, say, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. He did it this and this. And then he said, this woman really liked him. All of a sudden he said, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. And she said, there you go, Anja. He will be fine. Mother of God did this. She helped my Daniel. He walks and he talks. He's grown up now. Please tell me something. I know you've always been pious people and gone to church regularly, but how this all has affected your spiritual life, his healing. Do you go to Medjugorje? 
I do go, not like I used to before. I would go often. I would go on foot, we would go on foot, especially in the beginning and years after. I used to take all three of them with me when they were younger. Now I go, not that often, but when the young ones are to go, I tell them, well, the old lady will go with you by car. But not as I used to, I don't go on foot, I don't recall when. I had a spine surgery. I used to walk there. I took Daniel with me on by foot. You walked in Thanksgiving to Our Lady, right? I used to go, but not that often. Not that often. Do you have any photos? This is a Daniel. I have my Daniel. Dear pilgrims, it has been a rough time for each one of us. So many people lost their loved ones due to the pandemic. Millions of people stayed without job. It has been a very quiet year for all of us. First of all, we miss you. We miss the dynamic of our job. We miss the traveling. Slavica Ivan and I try to bring Međugorje closer to you. We introduced to you some locals who were not afraid to stand for Our Lady. We learned that with the prayer and fasting you can reach every goal in your life. As Our Lady, Queen of Peace said, with the prayer and fasting you can even stop wars. We learned that without confession there is no conversion, that there is no life without Holy Eucharist, and that without all of that we cannot have peace. When you come to Međugorje, probably you are not going to see Our Lady. But Jako Visionary said when his daily apparition stopped. Through the prayer, I realized that it is not important to see Our Lady physically, but it is important to open our hearts and let Our Lady in, because that is the very place where she wants to be. I know then that she is going to tell you what she said in Cana in Galilee. Do whatever he tells you and she will take your hand and lead you to Jesus. I'm going to quote the words of St. John Paul II. A true Christian can nurture trustful optimism. He is certain of not walking alone. In sending us Jesus' internal Son made man, God has drawn near to each of us. In Christ, he became our traveling companion. Pandemics happen through the history and as all of them, this one is going to end. I cannot promise you that you will not meet more hurricanes in your life. I cannot promise you that you will not go through more deserts in your life, but we learn with the help of Our Lady how to build our house on the rock. I would like you to know that all 206 Tours family in the shrines all over the world has been praying for you and I'm kindly asking all of you to pray for us. Usually when we have tours at the end we ask the pilgrims if they have any questions but I'm afraid that this time you will have to come for that. God bless you.